and double draw here again. So really good synergy within all our cards. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Good Game. Today we're playing free to play Mono Black. This deck contains zero rares, zero mythics, tailored for beginners just getting into the game who want to collect those wild cards for the top tier decks while not blowing them, trying to play the game and experience in different archetypes. So with that being said, we're also going to try to educate you in each one of these videos about a different mechanic and maybe a couple mechanics that work together. Today we're playing Black Devotion. We've got a lot of removal in this and a couple really cool combat tricks to gain extra value. So let's go ahead and take a look at the deck. We have four Falmir Knights. Profane Insight is its instant adventure that's tagged to this. You draw a card and lose one life. We can cast this before we cast the creature if we want. And then again, the creature is a 1-1 death touch for one, which is really great value for us. Hateful Idolon for one. This is a 1-2 creature with lifelink. Whenever an enchanted creature dies, draw a card for each aura card you control that was attached to it. Dead weight. We have three of these. Enchanted creature. Enchanted creature gets minus two, minus two. This is an aura, which is really great. Kaya's Ghost Swarm for one. Enchanted creature or planeswalker you control when enchanted permanent dies or is put into exile. Return that card onto the battlefield under your control. Or draw Enforcer. This is our first two drop. He is a one, two with death touch and afterlife. The afterlife, of course, giving him the one, one flyer once he dies. Yorok's Benlurker times three. This is a dual black card, so great for our devotion. When Yorok's Fenlurker enters the battlefield, each opponent exiles a card from their hand. We can pay three. The Fenlurker gets plus one, plus one until end of turn, and he himself is a 1-1. One, one. So even if we play this into death, it's really good value because he's having to discard. Myers Grasp times four. Enchanted Creature. Enchanted Creature gets minus three, minus three. So another Aura minus effect, which is really good because those tag off on our Hateful Idolon when that creature leaves the battlefield. Moving on to our first three drop, Elspeth Nightmare. On phase one or turn one, destroy target creature and opponent controls with power two or less. That triggers right when you play the card. And then in the second phase, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land non-creature card from it and that player discards that card. Uh, so you're getting a little bit of a discard effect and that's going to trigger at the beginning of your next draw phase. And then on turn three, exile target opponent's graveyard, which is really, really good as well. Inevitable end times two. This is an enchantment aura as well. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature has at the beginning of your upkeep sacrifice a creature. So more great removal that tags off our Idolon. We also have minions return. Flash, enchant creature. When enchanted creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under your control. This is good for a couple reasons that we're going to get into in just a second. But first of all, we're going to talk about Grey Merchant of Asphodel. For five, this is a creature zombie. Two, four. When he enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life where that is your devotion to black. This is really, really good. So he has two devotions. Uh, obviously, we're going to try to stack up our devotion as high as we can. It's not uncommon to be sitting at five, six, eight devotion, sometimes as high as 11 if your opponent doesn't have removal. So this is a really great way to finish your opponent. We also have 21 Swamps and two Witches Cottage when it enters the battlefield. If you control three or less Swamps, it's going to come in tapped. If not, it will come in untapped. And when it enters the battlefield untapped, you may put target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library, which is really, really cool. So we have Witches Cottage as a way late game to cycle, hopefully, a Grey Merchant from our library back on top. If not the Grey Merchant, we probably want to go for a Hateful Idolon if he's in the graveyard. And then maybe depending on what we need, we could go Falmir Knight if we need draw, Fenlurker if we want to discard, and Orzhov Enforcer if we want field presence. So a couple of good plays with that. We have Minions Return, which I wanted to talk about. When we put this on our opponent's creature and kill it, we're going to get that creature on our side of the battlefield, which is really, really cool. And it's easy to cast this on your opponent's creature because it has flash, and he's going to block your death touch creature, you guys. Or you can block him with your death touch creature, put this on him with flash, easy keys and lemon squeezy. You just gain yourself a free creature, hopefully. Also, we could easily cast this on our Grey Merchant if he's going to remove that. And then he comes into the battlefield, re-triggers again. So depending on what you need to do, Minion's Return really ties the whole deck together here. 
Again, we have Kaya's Ghost Swarm, which can be put on either our Hateful Idolon to ensure that we're not losing our draw engine, because whenever a enchanted creature dies, each aura card you have on, you're gonna draw a card, which is really cool. So we can ensure that we're drawing because it's enchanted with an aura and it's coming back. So that's a really powerful move there as well. We also have further draw through that via our Dead Weight and Myers Grasp. Those are using the minus effects on our opponent's creatures. Don't be afraid to stack them up if you need because when they remove or leave the battlefield, you're just gonna get that draw anyways. That's basically it, you guys. It's an alternative take on the Black Devotion, a extremely budget version. And I did this for a couple reasons. One, it's not prominent in the meta, so people don't really expect it. They probably know you're gonna play Gary, but the rest is a total surprise. And again, there are just so many things that can help you draw. And as a beginner, I really like to focus on big amounts of value because you guys are beginner and you need a little bit of wiggle room to get ahead to get that buffer zone so you're allowed to make a little bit of mistakes and learn without being punished too severely. So, Hateful Idolon is our most important creature here. It's going to draw you everything you want. We have a lot of light cost cards that you should be able to play one, two, three of a turn as we get there. And then once we've prolonged the game long enough, hopefully we've done a little damage as well along the way, we play our Grey Merchant and we should be able to get the kill that way. We're either cycling them, playing them on top of each other because they're not legendary. So with that being said, you guys, that is our free to play mono black deck. If you have any questions about this deck, go ahead and join the Discord. Link is in the description below. We'd love to have you and would love to help you play this deck to the best of your ability. Go ahead and follow us on Twitch as well. We're live every morning, 6 a.m. PST. Join the live conversation there if you feel fit to that. Could be worse. Guaranteed this is an Esper deck. Try to get card advantage as quickly as possible. Tossing a Shattered Sky, which can only mean there's replacements for it in his hand, which is bad news. Chillin, probably losing our two creatures here. It's not the greatest value for him. It's going in for another planes. And it's 0-4. Just biding his time. Let's go ahead and draw here. We're gonna hold Falmir Knight. There's the wipe, fine, whatever. Selling his graveyard. So dance is now useless. Let's go have grab our little lady here. He 
give him something to bounce next turn if he wants. He is also stuck on blue sources. There it is. Felmere Knight is a bad bounce source, but we will allow it. Playing this on our main page because Teferi's on the field. Let's just go ahead and draw out. Should have played one creature so we could have killed Teferi, potentially. Actually, we would have had to play both. Let's try this. Alright, I think we're in a pretty good position here. The Zero Fours have been defending him quite successfully. We're removing them just as successfully. Um, Dance the Mance is a little bit of an issue. He's got two in the graveyard. I mean, it wouldn't be bad. It keeps him alive, keeps him going. Right? I am not making this up as I go. Just toss our fan lurker. Say this to Fairy. Ending our turn here. I'm sure he'll sacrifice one of his Maltese. There it goes. Another 0-4 in the house. He drew a land, which is great. Gets to Teferi draw here if he feels fit. Puts it to the bottom. The Hateful Idiot is the best bounce target. Sacrificing his Teferi. Incredible. He really wants that draw. We're going to lose a uh, Falmer Knight. That's fine. We get the discard here as well, which is really quite cool. Powering through his Doom for Gold. Another land. That's fine. We actually don't mind seeing that. Now we get the hit. Let's toss this on the field over there, why not? And then we'll take a double draw because those are basically dead cards. <laughs> and again, just getting more removal. It's kind of funny.
Uh, he does take it away, though, so we're losing a, if anything, a, a cycle. Falmir Knight goes here, unfortunately. Play the Enforcer. That's a good sacrifice. And now let's power up our Fanlurker. Okay, for four. Not so bad. Our opponent has to sacrifice his own Doom. He's left with nothing but a top deck. And it is a Shattered Sky. Absolutely amazing. Probably the best top deck you could ever ask for. Alright, let's try to uh, recover the situation. Hopefully he gets no castles. That would throw a wrench into our plan as well. And let's just lay in, even though we don't have much devotion. Anything will do. Down to nine. It really comes down to our opponent's draw here. What did he get? He needs to remove our field again. And continue this duel of top decks. It's a land. That's not good. 37. He's down to 35. Elsa's Nightmare basically does nothing for us. But we do want to get rid of uh, his graveyard again. So we're playing anyways. Down to five. He has a few turns to salvage this. There is a Doom Foretold. That's great. I'm going to sacrifice our idiot here, sadly. Playing our Enforcer. In for three damage. Lethal next turn. Sacrifices his own Doom again. And needing a Field Wipe. Good game, you guys. So black may not be the most competitive archetype, but sometimes, just sometimes, you're able to get it going and immediately uh, getting shut down again. So maybe I'm speaking too soon. That would be absolutely crazy for a comeback from our opponent here. It's sad, but we have to kill his Teferi. You cannot leave that on the field, you guys. Even when you are this close to finishing your opponent off. Maintain composure. He's thought erasuring an empty hand just for the surveil. That's a great card if we can lay it in on anything uh, that our opponent controls. Again, he has no creatures over there. It's kind of a dead card. Ouch! Wow, is this going to be comeback of the century, you guys? Amazing. This is incredible. Force into removal again. We are going to squeak through here. Getting that one damage in. You know it. You absolutely know it. There's so many things in his deck that uh, completely shut us down. Elspeth conquers death. Amazing. Did he not exile my card? Let's end our turn here. He thinks he's got it. Um, we can still pay it with its increased cost, so we're gonna chill. It's a Castle Ardenvale. Let's put this on right now. Just so if it does get removed, uh, we have a little extra protection. We are going to get to Fairy Bounce here, though. Ouch. Holy, you guys, what world do we live in? Where is our Gary? That's all we need. Even if he bounces us, we're losing our minions return. Less than ideal. Should have been thinking further ahead. 
Element of the sea, that's susceptible. We have all four of our Garys here. Quite a long match. Yes, we've not cast a single gray. That's all we need. Come on, top deck. Believe in the heart of the cards, you guys. Gray Merchant coming up. Hmm. That's not it, but it will allow us to grab it next turn because we do have one in here, actually. Taking action here. Let's also get our Enforcer out, so he's got more that he has to deal with. Luckily, these 1-1 one -one tokens don't have lifelink. He needs lifelink. Some way, somehow. And he also needs to potentially mill us, if possible, because we do have the kill next turn. Look at him draw another Oath of Kaya, or he's going to bounce his Oath of Kaya. He could have bounced his Oath of Kaya and kept it going, but that's game. What a match, you guys. All right, so we had our last match accidentally have the music on. So I wanted to record a match in between that just so you got two really good matches. The sound quality has had to have been adjusted and uh, it's not in a good place. Let me know what you think of it um, in the comments below. I did fix it. You can barely tell there's music in there. And uh, I'm really curious to whether or not YouTube is going to flag it or copyright infringement. So hopefully not, hopefully we get around it. Uh, but if not, we might have to cut that part of the video, which is why I wanted to add a second match in for you guys, just in case. So again, everything revolves around our hateful Idolon. We're really wanting to enchant that right away or remove our enemies, creatures with our few enchantments. But here, let's go ahead and get that Discord, Discord, Discard started. Join the Discord as well, you guys. That's a pro tip right there. So he drew a planes, exile the planes. That's all right. It probably is Azorus control, which means we're in big trouble. Getting hit with the Teferi here, I'm sure. Negative, probably an absorb, right? You know what I mean? Just the worst thing that we could uh, get going. Sitting on Shattered Sky as well, I'm sure, excuse me. Let's go ahead and try to push that counter spell out of his hand. This is the one to counter because we're gonna have to make him discard again on the second phase of that. So Absorb is gone and we can attack and get one point of damage in. Knock him down to 20. We're up to 22. And hopefully we start pulling some enchantments here. Inevitable end is kind of a dud when your opponent is running you know, creatures. We just cast this on ourselves sometimes to get our Gary in the graveyard. Just to bring him back again. We are stacking lands quite successfully. Um, yeah. It is a bummer. He doesn't play creatures, so we're going to toss this on him now, just so we get the draw. Why not, right? And we can't draw cards because of Narset, so we're going to go ahead and play anyways. Let's take Narset down to two, so if she activates her ability again, she's going to be dead. Hey, this is not a great match, you guys, but uh, you can't win them all. Unfortunately, sometimes your deck isn't perfectly stacked. Overwhelming. And admittedly, I'm not sure Mono Black is one of the best decks to free to play right now. I just thought it was really cool how much value we're able to juice via our auras and Idolon. It's a sleeper creature. Shattered Sky, that's a bummer. And he has single target exile as well which means our Orzhov Enforcer is basically worthless. Am I right? So, 
Bomber. Getting hit with the glass casket here, I'm sure. Absolutely. If only. Kaya's ghost form protects from exile. He gets another defender out there. Why not? We do pull our draw engine, you guys, and we have protection for it. Plus a draw effect. So this could be really cool. Are we able to get going? Omen of the sea. I apologize for my phone. How dare they interrupt our recording. <gasps> okay, so he takes the scry, gets the draw. We're going to end our turn here. He's going to grab that 04. Sacrificing his Narset, which now opens up our draw engine, which is really good for us. Hopefully he scoops there. But of course not. And he's going to toss out a Dream Trawler. That's even worse. Are we lucky enough to pull Death Touch? No. We can lock it down. He's going to give it Hexproof, though. Woof. He just takes it. Uh, so it's a zero two. No attacks, straight chilling. The secondary dream trawler. Oh my god. Let me know if this is something you guys uh, run into in your own bracket. So again, basically first one to their value engine wins and the Dream Trawler definitely is said value engine. Woof. He's gonna go ahead and exile us now as well. So that is a good game, you guys. We were not able to get going here in our second match. I mean, we can draw now at least. I'm not sure what's gonna save us here from two Dream Trawlers. Uh, a gray is great, but again, two Dream Trawlers at 26. We know what this spells, and we can go ahead. All right, you guys, let's see what we can get going here. We do have our Hateful Indian. I'm gonna have to get you guys to help me with the pronunciation there. And this could be a potential uh, non meta deck. Have we been rewarded so much? Let's pray. Another really good uh, card as well that Death Touch Lifeline is very good. No blocks here. We're gonna let him power up his Johnny for now. Alright, let's get our own death touch out there. That's gonna be important. Hold his Johnny at bay. And then we should be able to get our minions return going out here somehow, some way. It's one of the harder plays to line up because your opponent can see that you have death touch beforehand. So a lot of the times, nobody wants to block a death touch creature, right? It's just like simple evasion. He's going for it here. Like, we've got nothing we could, and we probably should, just to deal with it. God's willing. So it's good that we're getting that out of the way. Right? That gives us a chump blocker for next turn, and then we're allowed to get our enforcer out again. I 
almost want to. We've got to continue on with our plan here. Let's pop this on our hateful alien. So the chances that he removes it is lowered because now it's got negative value if he does. Positive value for myself, of course. If he goes after a death touch, I'll be pretty sad. But there's the aerialist. Now that's hot. Drawing a card. I mean, of course, he goes to Token Town. Knight of the Adam Legion in the house, too. Who wouldn't mind that? Let's go ahead and just execute further draw effect. Grab that now. Double draw. Good value. Removal plus two. No attacks. The Bloodthirsty Aerialist, we're going to have to get a different way somehow, some way. Let's have him discard that card he's holding on to. Let's just try to slow down this bloodthirsty aerialist. No attack, straight chillin'. We can Elspeth it if he doesn't gain life here, which he won't. That's really good. He can sacrifice to give it protection. No, he can't. He cannot pay for it. That's awesome. Decking our loyalty even higher. Getting a double draw here again. So really good synergy within all our cards. Further death touch I will allow. That's really cool actually. And we're straight chilling. Right? No attacks. We'd like to leave uh, Meyer's Grasp up in case he does get another Bloodthirsty Aerialist. But then again, we'll probably just use that next turn on his life's bounty. Holding two Grey Merchants as well to finish him. going straight in with God's willing. Um, he wants that damage. That's incredible. Something I maybe would have saved. Um, and again, he's a protection from black. Ouch, down to six. And he's tapped. All right. Push him down to five. Crazy times we live in, you guys. Do you think he'll sacrifice himself? Let's do it. Let's try to push the double draw. 
Isha sacrifices herself, and then my spell will fizzle, and I won't get to draw. But again, we do kind of have to rely on our opponent, maybe not knowing that. It seems he does. He will sacrifice it to protect his Johnny. So we could have went in with our Elspeth's Nightmare, potentially. But again, now that protection that he was relying on next turn to kill us is no longer there. And we're going to gain some life, <laughs> obviously, here. Leaving both of our Death Touch characters up. Getting that little bit of damage in. Gaining two life. Does he do it? He needs another life's bounty, another God's willing. Uh, we will sacrifice our Fen Lurker, I believe, here. All of our creatures are one in power. So that's fine. Big old Johnny drew a land behind him, which is great for us. He knows he can't attack. Or else it's basically all over. We get rid of this graveyard, this is good. And then we can start playing these greys, which is really good as well. Let's tempt him with the attack, right? He won't go for it. Totally acceptable. Let's grab six life, deal six damage. Next turn, we're coming in with eight. And luckily enough, we were able to survive. Oh my god, you guys, he got so lucky. He almost had us. That's incredible. So close, you guys. Oh my gosh. That is absolutely amazing. If you enjoyed any of this content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our guide for beginners and our greatest hit playlists as well.